Hi, welcome to Seclair. I'm Dr. Zaida Chaudhry, and today we are going to talk about human nutrition, gut microbes, and immune system. And I have with me uh, Jim, a behavioral health therapist at Seclair. And I have uh, Ruthann, Dr. Ruthann Valentine. And I'm a psychotherapist that collaborates with the wonderful staff of Seclair. And we have students. I'm Allie from Duquesne University. I'm Frank Talbot from Chatham University. Okay, we'll talk a little bit about microbes, which are the normal flora. And uh, with that, I have just um, to tell you that, like, we have three stages of life. We have, uh, we are children, and then we are adults, and then we are early people. When we are children, we have energy, we have time, we have no money. When we are adult, we have energy, we have money, but no time. And when we are older or elder, we have time, we have money, but we do not have any energy. The same way this concept apply to the microbe system. Every stage of our life, we have different microbial system. When we are child, it's different. When we are adult, it's different. And when we are elder, we have a different uh, microbial system. And what is micro? Um, these are living organisms in our body, such as bacteria, fungus, protozoa. And they collectively, all the microbes in the human body is the community of the microbes. You can put this slide. Uh, if you see in this slide, we have microbes in the human. Microbiome includes species for each major domain. We have bacteria, we have fungi, we have E. coli viruses. And uh, we have a lot of species which are the normal part of our gut system. So microbes are all over us. Three millions, sorry, not three, many millions of microbes per square inch of your body and thousands of different species. And when we say normal microbial flora, they are called resident flora or transient flora. Resident flora are microbes that are always present in our um, body. We are colonized. But the transient flora are um, that they come into your body for a short period of time, maybe hours, days, or week, and then move on to die. So we have a nice slide here talking about some biotic relationship between microbes and their host. Symbiosis means to live together. So we are living with the community of the bacteria. So there are different types of symbiosis. Mutualistic, like both organism, different organism. They benefit each other, mean mutually beneficial. Like E. coli. E. coli, what it does is synthesize vitamin K and B complexes. And in return, what we do to the E. coli is that we provide a warm, moist, nutrient-rich environment, right? So they can survive. Common solistic. One organism benefit means the other is neither helped nor harmed. Then opportunistic, under normal conditions, microbe does not cause disease. Mm. But if the condition become conducive, it can cause disease. So Ellie. Do you know any opportunistic bacteria or any any uh, microbe? Uh, give you give any example of opportunistic um, infections? E. coli, as you described before, is also opportunistic. Very it can good. become harmful to us if our bodies are suppressed, our immune system is suppressed, as well as Staph aureus. Yes, it's another opportunistic infection. Good. Good. The same way E. coli normally is a part of our digestive tract, right? Mm -hmm. So when it is out of the digestive tract and it gets into the urinary tract, it becomes pathogenic. Now Staphylococcus aureus is the same as you said, that it is commonly found in the upper respiratory tract. But if it gets into the wound, then it is pathogenic. And if you are immune suppressed, then leads to a lot of opportunistic infection. So the role of microbes nutrition and immuno, immunity or immune system of your body, they go together and they affect each other. 
Now that was symbiosis. Now we have dysbiosis in which abnormal microbial colonization of intestine, where changes in the quantity and quality of flora become pathological and harmful. So when intestinal flora equilibrium is disturbed, the optimum expected health effects are lost. So autoimmune conditions like irritable bowel syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, can result. And a common cause of dysbiosis is antibiotic therapy. And we will talk about this more. So this is a nice slide. Um, and I really enjoy this understanding of how initial colonization of the newborn takes place. Human, when you are in the uterus, you don't have any microorganism at that time. Once you are born, you are colonized with all these microbes. Colonization of the skin, oral respiratory tract, genitourinary system, GIT system begins immediately after the birth with bacteria in the proximity of the birth canal and the anus. And that's the reason they say when it's a vaginal birth, it's very effective because all the flora which you are passing through, mm, the mother's vaginal uh, canal, um, the child receives that. Uh, and it is very effective. Uh, versus if you're going through the C-section, cesarean section delivery. So gene, environment, and feeding pattern, all of them are very, uh, they can be very fragile for microbes. And later on in your life, the microbiota is stabilized according to the type of feeding which you do. And it is very amazing type of diet. Feeding becomes a diet. So the type of feeding which you do is very, uh, um, very helpful. If it is effective uh, feeding, it's very helpful the microbes too to play their role, positive role. So there is a slide all in which you have alteration during the human life cycle, <coughs> and which I was saying, giving you the example in the beginning, that every stage of your life, you have changes in the uh, microbes. Changing means that, for example, if you have different kind of bacteria in, in a baby, so you become a toddler, you become adult and adorly. The percentage of these bacteria start becoming different. Some are more in the, when you're a child, some are more when you're in the adulthood. And these slides will tell you very nicely how these uh, alterations during human life cycles, these alterations takes place. Uh, it is surprisingly the human microbial metagenome study I was reading that our adult body contains 10 times more microbes than our own human cells. Uh, human colon contains up to 100 trillion bacteria. That's your gut. And numerous studies have suggested that shift in the population of the microbial communities may be associated with number of important acute and chronic conditions. So irritable inflammatory bowel diseases, Obesity, and it is it is very amazing how obesity, people become obese, and there is a role of these microbes, yes. and what kind of microbes um, your gut has. Um, cardiovascular diseases and skin diseases, vaginal infections. Now, in the next slide, um, there is an intestinal microbiota which is role in health and diseases. If you see this, which I have explained before, bowel diseases, cancers, obesity, and how they affect the metabolism, and how the immune system and function is effective, depending upon the role of your health, disease, and your microbes. So with that said, um, if you see that the intestine is not only a digestive or absorptive organ, but it is largest immune organ in our body. And uh, it starts when we are born, and then it continues to build all our life. So 80% of our immune system is found in the gut, and that's very amazing. So in short, 
Gut microbes provide, provide a dynamic and very beneficial symbiotic relationship with human host and perform key function in metabolism. So they produce energy in the form of short fatty acid chain, make vitamin K, regulate the turnover of the cell lining in the intestine, and help protect against invading bacteria and pathogens. But they also influence drug responses and development of many diseases. Since bacteria are the first to come in contact with the food, and they are affected by our diet, if our diet is apart, bacteria become imbalanced, inflammation is often the result. In this slide, you see this environmental influences, diet and immune response. And you see the role of antibiotic, which I'm going to do in the next slide. Lifestyle, which is a healthy lifestyle in which, um, um, which is another slide, which is environmental influences, diet and immune response. So diet is very important. And you see in slide hygiene, how you wash your hands and keep yourself clean. The, and altered intestinal microbes seen this like chronic inflammation and then there is metabolic dysfunction. And one of the important thing and disease which happens with uh, uh, with antibiotic use is C. diff which is called, it is caused by Clostridium difficile and what happens is you become, you have repeated infection of your gut. That's called C. diff associated diarrhea colitis. So C. diff associated diarrhea colitis is pseudomembranous colitis, toxic megacolon, atypical sepsis, societies, you name it, a lot of things, recurrent diseases and this is many times due to your antibiotic use and you get recurrent CDI. Impaired host response, altered intestinal microbes and that is dysbiosis, right? And uh, nowadays, you can keep the slide, nowadays what they are doing is fecal microbiota transplant in which uh, is the installation of stool from the healthy person into a sick person to cure this uh, disease. What is the rationale? that because of the imbalance in our bacteria, microbes is associated with these diseases. So they think that, and it is effective actually, correction with reintroduction of the donor's feces. So then comes the role of the nutrition. Um, there are trillion of living bacteria in our body and uh, they can contribute to the development of the diseases like obesity and uh, diabetes because emphasis is on the Western diet, refined and processed food. And that play a big role in, uh, in uh, development of obesity and uh, diabetes. So if we are overweight or obese, we discover that our diets are high in refined carbohydrates. For every ounce of food that we eat or drink more and more of that is being harvested for energy by an ever-growing gut flora that thrive on refined carbohydrates. So it's a nice slide, a uh, link between gut microbial communities and adiposity. If you see in this slide, evidence that gut microbiota composition can differ, there is an evidence that it differs between obese and lean humans. And speculation is that the gut microbiota can participate in pathophysiology of obesity. What is the first mechanism? It consists in the role of gut, you can keep this slide, it consists in the role of the gut microbiota to increase energy extraction from indigestible dietary polysaccharides. Now the second consists of the role of the gut flora to modulate plasma lipopolysaccharides level which trigger chronic low-grade inflammation. And the third mechanism proposes that the gut microbiota may introduce regulation of the host gene that modul modulate how energy is 
expended and stored? However, many of these questions are unanswered. And this slide, I actually, which I'm talking, I took from American Journal of Gastroenterology. So, what's diet got to do with it? If we have a state where the body's own bacteria and microflora is out of balance and the bad bacteria are running on the streets, then what happens? Well, we see we see increased uh, presence of a molecule. Uh, like the polysaccharides. Yes, thank you very much. That's found on the self surface of bacteria. Good, good. And these molecules trigger the body's immune defenses, producing inflammation. Good, 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 Jim. Very great. So, here what happens? Intestinal permeability. We have a slide here with a nice star. Do you have that? Or you don't have that, maybe? No, that's good. So, um, again, poor dietary choices, stress and emotions, food intolerance, infections, malnutrition, systemic diseases, low stomach acid, toxic exposure, they all are involved in the pathophysiology of intestine, right? Causing disturbance in all these microbes. Um, interplay between medicine and microbes. You have a slide here, Mike, which we talked also about C. diff. What does antibiotic do? These are all environmental factors. Kills infect infectious bacteria, but also disrupts natural flora, right? And can result in yeast infection and digestive problems. And we talked about what yeast infection mostly is many, and one of that we have talked. And also the chemotherapy to treat the cancer. That also causes many side effects. And when we are washing our hands with those, uh, what you call them, you need these days to kill your sugar bugs, <laughs> on and on. When we are washing, although we are trying to clean ourselves, but, uh, but what happens? We are actually removing all the effective microorganisms which are keeping you away from the diseases. So it's very important to see how we are taking care of our hygiene and which what chemicals are we using to clean our hands and what soaps are we using to keep ourselves clean. So um, Ali, there are a lot of things which can damage the gut flora. Mm -hmm. So do you remember or recall any? Um. Antibiotics, like you said, can affect your gut flora. Yeah. Other things such as steroids, um, different drugs, stress, diet, as we discussed, mm -hmm. infections and diseases can all affect it. Yeah, great. Do we have any more of the factors which can which can affect? You mentioned chemotherapy earlier, which was interesting. But outside of that, there are other forms of radiation, toxic chemicals that can affect your gut flora. Old age alone can do it. Pollution. Any toxic chemicals you ingest are exposed to, and surprising enough, even dental work. Yeah, great, wonderful. Yeah, these all things, antibiotics, poor diet, infection, they all are actually very damaging to the gut flora. And uh, there is a slide of imbalance of intestinal microflora result, result in poor nutritional responses, reduced efficacy of medications, psychological dysfunctions, accelerated aging, cancer, decreased immune response, susceptibility to infection, and physical discomfort. So this is all the result of imbalance of intestinal microflora. Well, Dr. Chaudhry, mm -hmm. quite often patients come and present with fatigue and just an overall sense of unwellness mm -hmm. and here at Seclair we do take a holistic approach of mind-body-spirit and I'd like to get your thoughts on uh, how you would assist an individual Great. in that case. We have a holistic practitioner here. We'll take her expert opinion. 
But first, I want to make a comment about uh, your beautiful presentation, uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Chardray. It really brings raises our consciousness uh, about our relationship with our microbes in our gut, and that we ought not to take that for granted. Mm -hmm. But the 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 uh, uh, the matter of how we eat really is important in our total digestive process, and 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 I'll make your uh, uh, and the microbes in our gut to be happy because how we eat. So we're going to take time. And we call it mindful eating. Isn't that beautiful? That we can actually sit, enjoy conversation, and chew, taste, swallow, and and our whole digestive system is happy. And we want to make our little microbes happy. And if they're happy, the rest of us is happy. So Good. that's how I see it. Make something complicated in a very simple way. Right. Yeah. Combining that's... our mind and our body together. Good. So that's a mindful living. That's right. Mindful living. Now this is the last slide. Ask both what we can do for our microbes and what our microbes can do for us because we have to live happily together again in symbiotic relationship. So the implications of our nutritional choices are significant than we may realize. Nutritional choices could impact our long-term health. If we keep our microflora happy and thriving in a balanced environment, our health will be on the right track. Don't you think so? Mm -hmm. Good. I do. I think it's a, keep them happy. Right. Um, I thank you very much. For all of you, you have been here. I thank you, Mike, a lot 